How about avocados? Remember Dr. Morrison, Mr. Pritikin, largely uh, Dr. Ornish, Dr. Esselstyn would say, not a fan, but uh, in the world of people eating, people love avocados. Are there any new data? In 2022, in the Journal of American Heart Association, again, Harvard School of Public Health looked at over 100,000 men and women, followed for about 32 years, they had very detailed dietary intakes. The second yellow bullet says, those with higher avocado intake, more than two servings a week, and a serving was half an avocado, had a lower risk of cardiovascular disease by 16%, and a 21% lower risk of specifically coronary heart disease, meaning heart attacks, angina, stent, and bypass. If you replace half a serving a day of margarine, butter, egg, yogurt, cheese, or processed meats, with the equivalent half a serving a day of avocado, you lowered your risk of cardiovascular disease. Higher avocado intake was associated with lower risk of cardiovascular disease in two large prospective cohorts of U.S. men and women. Again, this was not studied in whole food, plant-based, no SOS uh, uh, diets. It was not studied in people having active angina, walking to the mailbox at risk of bypass surgery, stents, and even uh, sudden cardiac death. It was in a broad population of nurses and doctors that were making up these two famous studies. But as a general statement, if you're a healthy person, as an avocado to be feared, it doesn't appear uh, that that's the case. Uh, this is a uh, study done in 2018. Avocado consumption increases in diet and risk factors for heart disease where if you look at LDL cholesterol on avocados uh, in a meta-analysis, LDL cholesterol went down, HDL cholesterol went up, total cholesterol went down, the ratio went down, and triglycerides fell significantly with avocados. All right, global burden of disease, the GBD study, the three top foods for life expectancy. This is a massive study that's been ongoing for 20 years and uh, is uh, looking at databases in over, I think, 180 or 190 countries. A meta-analysis using life table methods, looking at fruits, vegetables, whole grains, refined grains, nuts, legumes, fish, eggs, milk, dairy, red meat, processed red meat, sugar, sweetened beverages. And they published data, the estimated impact of food choices on life expectancy, a modeling study. What foods would give you the largest gain in your lifespan? Number one, believe it or not, was legumes. Two and a half years for females that eat a lot of beans, peas, and lentils. Two and a half years for males. Number two was whole grains, about the same range, two to 2.3 years, men and women. Nuts were number three. And these were more predictive of extended lifespan than fruits and vegetables, actually. And then the other two positive moves were less red meat and less processed red meat. If you ate less red meat, you gain one and a half to two years of life expectancy, less processed meat about the same. Amazing provocative data. In fact, if you look at the optimal diet, there's three green arrows on the left. Eating more legumes, whole grains, and nuts gives you more life expectancy. Cutting back on red meats, processed red meats, sugar sweetened beverages, refined grain and eggs give you more life expectancy. Now, fish, fruit and, veg fruit and vegetables fits in there. Uh, added oils didn't really cause any problem, but it didn't add and didn't detract. Uh, but it's interesting that the fruits and vegetables were not as powerful as legumes, whole grains, and nuts. So plan your diet accordingly. Conclusion, eat plants. This is my last slide as we approach uh, 80 minutes of conversation. Change is the only constant in life. One's ability to adapt to those changes will determine your success in life. So says uh, Benjamin Franklin. I bring that up because I have uh, provided some controversy here. Uh, the data going back to uh, Dr. Sidingham in the 1600s. I want to stress, uh, we talked about coronary CT angiography and precision imaging of heart arteries. And I want to stress that we've talked about the traditional database, fantastic database for heart disease reversal with whole food plant-based diets and some newer data that is provocative uh, of which you should always discuss with your health team, your health consultants. Um, and I will just say, uh, it's not a battle, 
But um, there was a recent interview uh, where it was said, why does Dr. Joel Kahn and Dr. Kim Williams present data where extra virgin olive oil may have some cardiovascular benefits? And have they ever seen a patient reverse heart plaque without completely committing to a whole food plant-based, no added oil, no salt oil, sugar diet? And the answer is, I can't speak for Dr. Kim Williams, who knows the literature uh, as well as anybody in the world. But uh, I presented the literature and I've seen patients using coronary CT angiogram reverse uh, massive amounts of heart plaque uh, using diet, uh, supplements, exercise, stress management, and prescription drugs. And there are several different roads to the uh, colorful part of the Wizard of Oz story. So good stuff. I remain a hardcore vegan in my 46th year. <laughs>